Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, today we have with us Jock Teichmann. He is actually from Germany, but currently he has set up his rehab center in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, a proactive individual who specializes in working with all levels of high performance sport and also rehabilitation. And he is the founder of Rahmat Therapy and also now the director of that center. Head of re he also worked as a head of reconditioning and rehabilitation in National Sports Institute of Malaysia, podium program. And from 1997, he has been working in uh, with uh, National Sports Council of Malaysia uh, and also National Sports Institute of Malaysia. And he was one of the best athletic therapists in Malaysia. And almost all the athletes who are injured used to undergo training under him. And that's how uh, the Malaysian uh, system of uh, rehab program was uh, coming into existence then. So he is actually a pioneer in developing the Malaysian uh, rehab and that is national athletes rehabilitation program if they are injured basically. And he has worked with a whole lot of sport, including uh, Lee Chong Wei who was actually the world champion in badminton. And I think uh, is, if uh, Lee Chong Wei has returned back to sports in 69 days, uh, in fact, uh, around 50 percentage of uh, the contribution was from basically from our uh, York type man. Uh, so he, beside that, he had also worked as a team leader for high performance and sports from 1997. And also he worked as a sport therapist in Medica Clinic Leipzig, Germany. Now let's uh, welcome uh, Jock Teichmann for his presentation of his topic entitled Rehabilitation Training After Knee Injuries and Return Back to Sports. Over to Jock Teichmann. Yes, good evening. Oh, oh good evening. Sorry, uh, it's Malaysian time, so you get a good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure. Uh, to give this speech today with uh, you guys. Uh, it's a, yeah, a honor to be there in front of 400 people. And I hope you, I can give you a little bit a vision what we are doing still in my center because a lot of athletes still are coming uh, to train here when someone is injured. And I don't want to talk so much about myself and uh, better is you can check what we did and what we are still doing. And what I want to give today to you guys is more a clue what you can do. Because I know especially coaches after injuries, they sometimes clueless because the people or the athletes are out and you have no clue what is going on. So for me, it's every time, and this was my philosophy in the National Sports Institute of Malaysia, when you're working with high performance athletes and it doesn't matter who is it, if it's a young guy or a top athlete like Panda El Arinong, uh, Olympic uh, medalist in, in diving, when they are injured, we all treat him the same and they are not outcast. Yeah, they are no, working with us. And when we get the support of the coaches, is this much better than when the coach leaves them alone? Because it's also every time a big mental issue for these athletes. They will ask every time, why me? Why I got injured? What I did wrong? Sometimes you will see later in some videos, it's not their fault. Yeah, and you have to accept it. Injuries are normal in high performance sports and this is a, it's a fact and we can't run away.
Yok, yo. Not audible. Hello. Yo. Maybe internet issue, sir. It's not audible. I all uh, sorry about it. I think there is some internet issue. Uh, anyway, we'll uh, join back uh, shortly. Um, meanwhile, I want actually um, probably uh, yeah yeah yeah. Can I um, mean it's I think. Sir, I'm not my sir. Hello. Uh, can I call upon uh, just not too long, uh, David Matthew to say a few words on this webinar? Webinar. David Matthew. Sir, sir, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, opportunity to say a few words about this webinar. It was really... Uh, uh, meaningful and we are learning uh, many things out of this webinar and uh, our, every session is very interesting and informative uh, and of course uh, many Hindi speaking uh, uh, coaches and uh, members are there and they are also benefited out of translation and uh, the participation is very good and uh, it's very quite interesting and we are uh, very very much happy about it and uh, this kind of programs we, we need in future too and as you said every week uh, in future it is going to come uh, uh, thank you sir thank you for uh, on behalf of all I, I, I am thanking you for the initiative taken by you and uh, force uh, you are uh, uh, keeping every day and uh, thank you sir thank you for the opportunity for all for learning okay we have also Anju Bobby George who is actually with us uh, I hope if she can speak over it would be good. Anju, Bobby, George, Baskar. Oh, yeah. yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so I, uh, I'm attending this class from the beginning. So I'm finding it very useful to all the coaches. And uh, so most of the things, uh, uh, actually, it's experienced through, uh, during my career also. So it's easy for me to connect with, and uh, uh, but uh, uh, some other coaches who are less fortunate, they are getting a good chance. So thank you, uh, uh, Saju sir, for uh, um, uh, giving uh, all the coaches a wonderful opportunity to connect with uh, all the new technologies and uh, new learning uh, ideas. Uh, thank you, Sai, also. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks a lot. For joining. Uh, our, but, I mean, our York Techman has still not joined. We'll uh, get a feedback from uh, Dr. Kalyan Chaudhary. I'm joined, sir. Yes, joined. Uh, okay. Okay, then we go back to the presentation. Until how far we came? I think maybe like we restart back from the second slide. Satu, stop. Yeah. Second, um, yeah. You got the second slide or the first slide? Second because slide. Because suddenly I saw only connecting, connecting, connecting. That was. So I couldn't see you guys anymore. Okay, okay. Second so you saw slide. the first slide or the second slide? 
yeah we saw only the karate athlete first slide now move on to the second slide please okay good okay good so okay what we're doing now it's a little bit in the background about injuries so everyone knows when you have a knee injury there is a lot of people having this so we're not going what for me is every time very tough that athletes when they're going back to training and now i'm talking as a coach they are normally have only 75 to 80 percent of your conditioning level what you had before and schmidt fleisch and dobanski found it out in a very good uh, research project in 2004. what we realize every time most of the athletes after injuries they are absolutely lack of confidence the avoid situation full contacts man-to-man -man situation direct physical and important for us maximum speed so there was a very nice uh, research project with the uefa they did over 27 clubs, they are working in the Champions League and 20 women's club in Sweden, plus 19 clubs in Sweden. And they check it out how many actually ACL injuries we can get in these 10 years in a high level. So what you can see here, we had 139 ACL injuries. 125 ruptures, 14 was partial. It looks not high, but when you think about it, that means per year, it's quite high. And these are in Europe. So, interesting, we started now. When you see this here, from this 135, 119 playing in, in the same level. Still was, uh, 15 was still in the time, yeah? But five retired after injury. And now, they need at least eight months to recover 100%. So when someone tell you guys, it's getting faster, be very careful, yeah? Everyone has a biological limitation and we have to accept it. So what we want to do actually, we want to provide actually the best rehabilitation program for our athletes. And when you think high performance athletes, how long they train, means for me, they also can train very long because they are not sick, they are injured. There's only one small part of their body, yeah, have this injury. The rest of the body is very healthy. When you think about a knee injury, and we call it now the left knee, so the left knee is injured, but the rest of the body can do something. And when I hear that every time a lot of people say, oh, rest, 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 this is not good. Athletes can't rest, this is not allowed. And this is a take home message for you guys. Please, these people are not sick, they are injured. There is a big, big difference. Yeah. And what I preach every time, there is no passive treatment. We need very fast, active rehabilitation. Yeah. And of course, you can mix that. You have, you know, ice therapy, and then you do manual therapy, and then you do a circuit training. It's not a big deal. But very important when it's coming to this, yeah, try to work so soon as possible with these athletes. For me, simple 10 days without training means your fitness level is dropping to 35 to 40% already. And to get this back, you need time. 
And athletes and coaches don't have time, unfortunately. Maybe right now because we have COVID, but I don't think so. This is a good reason to yeah, wait for the rehabilitation. Also, when you think about it, after a surgery, you have a lot of muscle atrophy when you don't do anything. But when you activate a muscle, you don't have atrophy. Okay. What we did also for you guys to see when I was a little bit shocked when I took over uh, the whole thing in Malaysia and I was did a small call it research stuff and I realized from these five events what we took only as an example and it was all knee injuries and most of them ACL reconstruction unfortunately a lot of people got re-injured again. And another, for me, shocking number was that 23 people quit their training and their high performance sports. So in the end, when you see this, we was lucky, maybe 62% was not bad, but quit 38% and 65% got re-injured again. And this is not a good number. Absolute not a good number. And then we started with a special program, we call it UGP. And it's called actually Unexpected Disturbance Program. You will listen to this a little bit later. And we are coming to this. So, When it's coming to UGP, a lot of people had asked me what it means. I say, actually, uh, unexpected disturbance, like a perturbation. Uh, when you check the uh, dictionaries worldwide, it's actually very nice when you see that perturbation is a small change in the movement, quality or behavior of something, especially unusual change. So that means you're not thinking about it. Yeah. What is a disturbance? And I like this very much, actually, the interruption of a settled and peaceful condition. Yeah? Unexpected is surprising or unforeseen. So what we find out, actually, when it's coming to high performance rehabilitation, and especially the last one, to return to sports, a lot of people can run, they can sprint, they can jump, but they can't play or perform. So what is the reason? And it's actually very simple. When we train normally trampoline, we are trained actually over 0 0.3 second. What we need, we need actually disturbance under 0 0.2 second because the injury are caused under 0 0.2 second. That means this 0 0.1 second missing to reconnect with the brain. So you're afraid, scared, and you don't want to do this. So you have to actually activate your athletes to going back in a top condition. And I will show you now a video as a normal German driver with a lot of discipline. And then when I came to Malaysia, Dr. Satchu can sing a song about that. And you will see what it means actually there are two patients on the traffic. And I guess India is maybe the same like Malaysia, maybe a little bit more. And enjoy the video. And this is me sitting in a car in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, so you realize, for me, it was not easy because in Germany, we don't have this. It doesn't exist. So, but after 20 years experience in Malaysia, I know something will come. 
So I am prepared already mentally. This unexpected disturbance will come. And this you can do when you do your training with your athletes. You can do the same stuff. So you can train your athletes. Yeah. So when it's coming to rehab training, what it means actually, rehabilitation is actually a big, huge factor. So we have physiotherapy, we have mentally, we have sports therapy, hydrotherapy, nutrition, and in biomechanics. And when people say, oh, I'm going to the physio and do my rehabilitation, this is only a small part, this is maybe 20%. I mean, it's coming to rehabilitation training. After phase one or two, you don't need a physio anymore. Because then you need more sports therapy, biomechanics, etc. So, and the physiotherapist doing a good job and they are awesome, but have they the time to train with athletes three to four hours? Is this possible? Big question mark. I say no. And what you need is a good team to help you to bring your athlete back. And what we want to do also, what you can do as a coach to bring them back to a normal level. So importance of rehabilitation, you have to recover, you have to strengthen and you have to rebuild and you have to prevent. These are the most important thing what we or you guys have to do. When you think about speed up the process of rehabilitation after sports injury, this doesn't mean you have to bring him so fast back as possible. No, you have to bring him back so good as possible in, in the best way. And I'm coming back what I said already, five minutes ago, important is this, you have a biological limitation. And for you guys, important, everyone have a different adaptation. So some people, they have a very good wound healing. Some people doesn't. Some people have a very good adaptation to the muscles. Some people doesn't. And when someone say to me, oh, we have a protocol we follow, in high performance, this is not right because everyone is different. All athletes need a very good tailor-made program. And how we do it, I will show you in a simple way how it works. So I said already, we are coming from the passive stuff to the active. So we can do millions of things. And this is a treatment concept what we do and the best way to show you because we're all coming from high performance, what I like to do, and you see this is a 400 meter lap, yeah? I do every time an assessment first. Then we do the training, then I monitor, I do my evaluation and do my verification. So that means I have to test the athletes where I'm standing right now. And this is a fact and we can't go away with this. And it looks like this. We evaluate, so we do our testing, then we do our planning. Then I do my treatment and therapy. And then, so how, the most important thing when I say already, we have our testing. So when it's coming to this, what I can do? Okay, this we don't need. This is what I'm looking for. This is for you guys quite important. There's a lot of W's inside. So what can we test? How can we test? When can we test? then we need a lot of diagnostic and biomechanics. Why we have to test and where we have to test. And a lot of people ask me every time why we need so many things. It's very simple. 
I guess you all had already someone who had a knee injury. You every time ask yourself why these people are limping. And when you ask them why you're limping, most of the athletes say, no, I'm not limping. And you said, yes, you are limping. So then you do a, bio, yeah, a biomechanical analysis, simple one. You put him on a treadmill. You put maybe a handphone, doesn't matter which one, in a slow motion, and you show him from front, and then he can see how he limped. And then you say, you know why? Number one, you're afraid and scared. That's the reason you lock up your knee joint. Secondly, you still have a valgus, so you're moving inside your knee. When people see that, seeing is believing. When you tell them, it doesn't work. So long, you have parameters, everything black and white, nobody can touch you. And coming to the training later, this is the most important point. Do me a favor, do your data. It's very important. So, also when it's coming to testing, they have to relevant to an injury. It doesn't work, you do something, but it's not relevant to the injury and you can't do it anyway. So when someone have a knee injury, three weeks post-op, and I call it now ACL, so you can't do any endurance tests, this doesn't work, yeah? So we have to time every time, think what we can do for these guys and how far we can go, yeah? We are looking to this stuff. And what I'm coming for me is the first point. Repeat your test in regular intervals. That means when we have people in different kind of level, so long we have it, everything black and white, it's good. And also think about your planning of training, your load of training. It's very simple. We are coming later to all the stuff, yeah? They will see. So next one is not to get so bored for you guys. What I will do now, I show you two videos. The first video is from Lee Rixiu. She was the Olympic champion 2012. In 2016, in the semifinal in the Olympics, she ruptured her ACL. And this is a non-contact injury. The next video, what we were watching is a contact, how you can get it there. So what I say, non-contact can be two or three reasons. Number one, the strain in their leg was not enough. And normally when it's coming to badminton, overhead shots, landing on one leg, because they are looking at the shuttle, they don't look, think about your leg and your landing. There's a lot of load and force on your knee. Think about myself, maybe I will do this, I will jump up 78 kilos, and maybe I can jump up 20 centimeters, I'm landing with full speed, there's over 200 kilo working on my knee. When I can't handle 200 kilo, something will be happening to my knee as well. It's simple, this biomechanics, yeah? So I can't say enjoy the video, but it's not so tough. So it was very tough because actually she was the highest favorite to win the gold medal again. And that was the reason she was out. So we do it one more time, there you can see it again. Okay, so you saw what was happened to her typical 
ACL, but we call it, yeah, injury, overhead shuttle, landing, she couldn't handle, she had a little bit vulgar and she was there. Yeah, so we have to accept it, it can be happened. So the next one, it's a full contact. So we do it another two more times. You see what, is him, what has happened here, full impact. You can't do anything. Yeah, you can't avoid. Okay, good. So when you see all the things, so we, we were thinking in 2009, so we have to do something. And we created some special stuff. And Dr. Zachu was still involved this time. It was in uh, 2009. We had 28 athletes, seven male, 11 females, all top level athletes. They all had knee injuries. What we did with them, we did this UTP program over three or four years. And what we find out as well, unfortunately, some of these guys in our sports institute, in some physiotherapies, we didn't get any data. What was the muscle skirt? Which kind of training they did? So, and we said, oh my God, so how we can come forward here? Yeah, so one more time, you need data. And then we said, okay, let us start. And for me, when it's coming to high performance sports, we have to follow five phases. And we are going now step by step and very slowly to all these phases. And we are still thinking about the ACL reconstruction, what we can do. In the first phase, what we call it, you have to mobilize your knee joint again. What is your training's targets? It's your reduction of muscle atrophy. You have to try to improve your muscle strength, development coordination, improve your flexibility after your surgery. And what you can do as well, you want to go through some easy circuit training. What you can do, you can, uh, there's a small mistake what I say right now, it's not complete exercise. It's actually, yeah, what we call it, yeah, combination exercises. So you do a lot of combinations and stretching. You can do a lot of isometric training, but makes no harm as well. And a lot of strength training, circuit training, etc. And easy with high performance athletes, you can train at least one to two hours easily. Yeah, what we say again, these people are not sick, they are injured, they really can do something. Okay. So when you see this young boy here, he was exactly three weeks after surgery. We come, yeah, you can do already some muscle function test. Is there anything, is there any activation? Yes or no? Uh, you can test his non-injured leg about some strength. Yeah, do isometric strength. You can also do a maybe a single leg uh, maximum strength test with one repetition. Yeah, that you know, okay, in his non-injured leg, he can push maybe 150 kilos. And this is the target where we have to go maybe in six months when he's no more injured. And I give you today an example what one of our athletes, he was the Asian champion in karate, what he did in his first phase of rehab. And I give you some advices as well. Rehab training doesn't mean you have to compete. This is not a competition. We want to do something, yeah? And important, 
for you guys and you're all coaches and I know you're very good and I'm quite happy to work with these guys. The body needs adaptation. And I have every time a big issue with my guys when I say, okay, what you're doing? Oh, he's in phase one. We are doing a single leg race, 10 repetition, three sets for four weeks. And I say, what do you want to achieve actually with 10 repetition, three sets? When you do every day the same thing. Uh, uh, training, you say, no, this is not training. Where is your variation? Where is your adaptation? Which kind of load you're doing? When you do every time the same, what we want to do actually, we want to destroy the cells, the old ones and the injured ones. And we want to build up new ones. So when I do every time the same, there is no more adaptation to our muscles. And that is the reason why I have a muscle atrophy, because most of the time we are doing the same. And this is very simple. So we have to think about how overcome this issue. I, can't, I don't want to call it problem. I call it the issue. Yeah? Think about it. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Also, for me, the training has to do in his injured part without pain. You can do a lot in phase one. Yeah? And there is no doubt. You see here, Asisul Avang, world champion in Karin. And think about him, what he's doing. It's four weeks after surgery, and he can stand already and do balance exercises. It's simple. Yeah? Good. And this is my program, what I did with Lim Yogway, Asian champion in karate. So he did on Monday morning, 30 minutes physio, and then he did a little bit on the scooter, some stretching, coordination exercise, stabilization exercise. We have a very nice cable curl. And it was in the morning training. So you realize already in the morning, he's there for three hours. In the afternoon, we did the endurance session, 60 minutes on the bike, relaxed and easy, a small, yeah, not the full range of motion, only 80 degrees, enough. We did some simple throws in the sitting position, stretching eyes. So in the end, you can see this is four hours training plus physio. Yes. In the afternoon on Tuesday, he did his training program. And you see, this is a typical strength endurance program. A lot of repetition, low load, short rest. And this whole program going until Saturday morning, Sunday was out. Unfortunately, his wound healing was not so perfect. That was the reason we couldn't go to the water. Yeah. But in the end, I was yeah quite happy. So in phase two, what is coming, but this is only a guideline four to six weeks later. Yeah. What is our target? You want to improve the endurance, strength, endurance, coordinative abilities, and mobility as well. And you see now the training form is much higher. Yeah. Motion skills. Yeah. You go to aqua training, you go to the water, etc. Yeah. And we also start in phase two with the isokinetic training. And I'm very honest to you guys, isokinetic training is very good for rehabilitation, especially in phase two and three, because you can train very well a single muscle. But also isokinetic is not the key to the world. Simple answer, why? Tell me which kind of movement in sports have the same resistance and the same speed? No one, not even one exercise, yeah? 
not even one event have the same speed and the same persistence. It's impossible. You think about, you kick the ball 10 times, it's every time the same different kind of speed and different time of force. But for training and testing matters, isokinetic is very good. There's no doubts about it. Yeah? And please think about it because a lot of people say, oh, you do isokinetic, you're getting better, and this is a good test module. Test module, yes, but you only think you, you only can do one muscle, single muscle. So you never have all the muscle change involved. Yeah? So here is the program for Lee. Yeah? Lim Yok Wei. So when you're coming to the, he already started jogging on the soft mat. That was eight weeks after post op. Yeah? So it's already coordination, training, endurance, etc. He's going to the water, yeah? And also his load was much higher than before. And you see him, what he is doing on the SRT machine. <coughs> Sorry. And the SRT machine. It's only the short form. SRT means thoracic resonance therapy. So this machine doing the same stuff that we was talking before. They give impulses totally random to the body, and this is an oscillation in vibration plus thoracic. Thoracic means noise. Think about you're very sensitive. Think about your home. You go to bed with your partner, and he or she starts snoring. So you are very disrupted and you're very unhappy. And this is what we're doing with this uh, kind of training as well. So we want every time to activate our muscles. And you see here, yeah, Lim Yok Wei, 10 weeks after what he's doing on, the, on this machine. So what you can see, yeah, he was very stable on this machine already, yeah, and he can kick. So not jumping yet, it's much too early, but we was very happy because his rehab process went very well. And then, of course, muscular, we want to build up the muscles that he get fit for our next performance. And then you already think about striding, running, yeah, coordination runs left and right, a lot of hypertrophy training, and normal for me, two sessions per day. And this is his program. So Monday morning was off, then aqua jogging, yeah, was over 20 laps, this, yeah. And then you see two laps warming up, and then he did a lot of speed in the water still, yeah. And the training was much higher, yeah? So you see on Wednesday morning, we start already the drills, but we call it over the mini hurdles, a lot of coordination stuff, a lot of jumps, yeah? But he was fit. So when you see the whole program coming back to five hours, easy training a day, so that you're preparing much better for anything that's coming up. So, and you see here, this young lady, world champion in diving, full recovered already, 14 weeks post-op, and she's doing some yeah, training with, uh, we call it a biofeedback training that we call, we still want her not to bend over 90 degrees. So she have to follow, and you can see the small curves there to be every time in the right range of motion. And of course, phase four, sport specific training. So it's actually, but I call it most of the time with the coaches already. Yeah. What is our target mental fitness? Big issue for all athletes because they are scared. And you are the guys to have to help them to come back. Yeah. 
reintegration to the team. For me, big issue because sometimes, what I said already, they feel like outcasts here sitting outside. So this is all your stuff, what you have to do. And this was the program that we did with him. You see, we are in the maximum training, pyramid training for him. He did a lot of runs. Yeah, when you think about karate, need a lot of condition. So 20 times 100 meters, I have issues to do this. But again, and in the end, you can see uh, Lim Yok Wei won the Asian champion again in 2012. So he was very happy. And that was his whole yeah, program, what we had. And then we have as well the preventive training, what we are doing normally after he integrated full to the team, full training. And then we said, we want to prevent this injury again. And we do two to three times a special training. And for these athletes, what you need, it's a lot sometimes self-motivation because this is running away. Yeah. So, and then you see what we did with him. Team training, team training, team training, and only, yeah, we did a lot of jumps with him, what he need. And yeah, he was quite happy. End of May, we can say thank you very much. After seven months, seven and a half months with, with us. And what is every time good when you see his performance in leg press. And the good one, we have this over a long period of his time with us. This is not only good to see for us, it's also a good motivation for your athletes. Yeah. Think about also when you do the, the leg press coming, you know, you only can do it over 90 degrees because we have a limitation. Everything that is going over 90 degrees, there's a lot of stress on your meniscus, what we don't want. Yeah. So I give you also uh, a small video that's not too um, tiring for you and too much theoretical stuff. Uh, a basketball player and with him, he was following this special program, this UTP program over seven months. And you can see which kind of presentation training I did with this man. You can see he's shooting and every time I touch him that he had to find his balance. And especially for basketball players, yeah. Yeah, it's very important to get this back because basketball is full contact sports. He call it is not a contact sports, but for me, one more time, for me, basketball is full contact. Yeah, and you can see, yeah, every time from behind, yeah, someone like me is there and touch him, yeah. And that's why we call it, it's unexpected. And when you do this kind of exercise, you can think about yourself, what you want to do with your athletes. It is exactly under 0 0.2 seconds, the disturbance. So after a while, these people know exactly, someone is there, will disturb me. I'm prepared for this, I'm ready. Yeah? Don't need, okay. So when we come into our important factors of optimal rehabilitation. And this is quite for you guys that you can see. For me, it's absolutely the healing of the wound must be without any complications. So you can't train when there may be a spas or something like that, you can't do. Physiotherapy starts immediately after the surgery. So this is important that people get activated. Yeah. Of course, nutrition supplements have to be there also to run the five phases of rehabilitation. Try to do it without any mistakes. Don't think about we are all superheroes, we are not. And there is, I say it again, we have biological limitation, we can't overcome this. Yeah. Okay, and then after we did our 
statistics, yeah, with our injuries. So we can realize we had 24 athletes. They completed the program. Continuing sport was eight, uh, 20. Four quit. Unfortunately, what we realized it, yeah, what was happened, two was false and the rest was, but the re-injury was very low. We had only 1%. And I guess this is quite good and we can be very proud of that. And, uh, but I want to say from the four people, he quit. Two was forced to quit from the national team. He said, oh, you're too old and this doesn't work anymore. So in the end, that was for them, you have to say goodbye. And that's it. And my conclusion, and that's what you can take home, for you to know rehabilitation training is totally different from a normal training. It takes work at a time to recover. Yeah. And we have our biological limitation. So I hope that was a small, short introduction, what we are doing about rehab. And uh, yeah, you can have me now for all the questions with anger. And first of all, I say, Danke, Nandri, Sugram, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you very much. And it was a pleasure. And I'm now here and waiting for your questions. Thank you. Saju, you can yeah. start. Thank you, Yop. <laughs> uh, it was a very good presentation. And I think, uh, see, uh, people need to understand what, what is the difference between rehabilitation part, uh, early rehabilitation and athletic rehabilitation. So I think Yop has yeah. given uh, uh, insight into this uh, athletic rehabilitation with uh, 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 special emphasis on UDP. Yes. Yeah, that is one of the uh, things which has been uh, recently looked into. And uh, probably if re-injury should not occur, then probably this kind of uh, training has to be uh, emphasized upon. So now yeah. I open the floor for questions. And if you have any questions, please do put them on the chat box. We'll... Oh, that's you also. Yeah. Uh, for you guys, I still have uh, some videos when you want to see when some people say, oh, not clue yet about uh, this uh, UTP and which kind of unexpected disturbance. So, but I guess we saw something. I give you two uh, explanations. Uh, then you, the people can see as well how that works. And you can see me there in our ISN a long time ago. We are waiting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can share share the screen and uh, once again present. The, Wait, yeah, we yeah. are we are we are doing it now. And then you can see. So meanwhile, questions can be put up. Yes. So you can see, yeah, someone is touching him from behind. He's standing on one leg. Yeah, and he's a football player. Also, ACL reconstruction, relax and easy. So we every time was thinking what we can do with these people. And it is not easy. You can, yeah, you realize that. And he is quite stable, both sides. So we are quite happy. Oh, we was happy. <laughs> okay, Satya, <you> come. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is one question from uh, Padmakar Rao. During preparative training, is it advised to give uh, isometric exercise to maintain the muscle mass? Pre-operative. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Weightlifting. Uh, okay. So I hope, uh, of course, isometric, you can do any time. Isometric means there is no, yeah, any difference in the muscle because you only yeah, you contract yeah so origin yeah it's all the same you can start very early with isometric exercise it's not a big deal yeah 
except you have a muscle injury, yeah, and you did operation there, I guess that you have to be very careful. But when it's coming to knee injuries, you can do it quite fast, okay? The next day is not a big deal. You can start immediately and you can avoid also muscle atrophy, but muscle atrophy is coming anyway because of the inactivity, yeah? So you can't do 3,000 isometric exercise, makes no sense anyway, yeah? You okay. got it? Yeah. Okay. So many. <laughs> uh, most of the things are actually uh, not questions. Uh, it's all thanking you for the session. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You're so welcome. I was, uh, yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. Okay. There is one question from PC Pandian. Uh, he's a volleyball coach. When you say the athlete is safe, do you look at the previous range of motion? Safe? Yes, of course. I mean, think about especially, you know, normally what we say, you know, coming to normal range of motion must be 180 degrees. I mean, you have to touch your buttocks. So when you can't do this, there's something wrong. We are high performance sports. So when you can't, which kind of complication can be happen? I mean, there's maybe a swelling in the knee, et cetera, et cetera, but you have to check it out. What is it? Why he can't? Maybe sometimes because you did too much training and then you, his ellipsoas and the quadriceps are too strong. And this can be the reason suddenly he can't bend his knee 100% anymore. So you have to think twice. Flexibility, coordination, and strength have to be together. Uh, in grade three meniscus tear, is there any scope of recovery to its full form without surgery? Oh, you have a grade three uh, meniscus tear. I mean, when you're doing high performance sports, I will prefer that this guy is going for surgery because you have to think every movement uh, where we call it doing turnings, and I, I'm not sure, I call it now, maybe it's a posterior, posterior, yeah, tear. So you do any left turns or right turns, you will feel this, and this is painful in high performance, yeah. Uh, and when you have a tear, a small one, then you at least have to, I call it, to rest six to eight weeks to heal. And I'm sure you don't have the time to do this. Yeah, so surgery is a better option. He can shave it, he can stitch it. And actually the best is the stitch because for me, also when he did six weeks and I'm sure he did training, there was something happened. And I'm sure he still have pain when he do his call it bending over 90 degrees. I'm not so sure because it's far away and I'm not a big fan from uh, what we call it far away diagnostic. But the first thing crossing my mind why he didn't do a surgery. Okay. Right, another question. What is the rest period you suggest after any sports injury before starting a rehab program? This is by Padmaka Rao. Uh, one more time. I couldn't get it. There was some under breaks. Where is it? Okay, this is a question by Padmaka Rao. What is the rest period you suggest after any sports injury before starting a rehab program? He's asking for rest period. Maybe I can find this here. Oh, the rest period. Oh, okay. Very simple. Which kind, number one for me, it's very simple, which kind of sports injury you have. I mean, when you twisted your ankle, we call it as an example, and you twist it, you, know, you do your eyes, and then you sleep, and you hope you can sleep because it's not so... Yeah, serious, you have a small swelling. Actually, uh, two days later, you can start with your training. It's not a big issue. It's not a big issue. So, but training means rehab training because you think about you have a swelling, so you need ice therapy, you need a mobilization for your, for your joint, et cetera, et cetera. And when it's because I know rest, what means rest? 
rest for your joint or rest for the whole body. Rest for the whole body is wrong. For your joint, maybe. Yeah, because when you, our athletes are very smart. When you go to the doctor and the doctor says rest for two weeks, that means for them, do nothing for two weeks, but this is wrong. Rest means maybe for this joint, don't do any load. But it doesn't mean that the rest of the body can't train. That's wrong. Okay? Yeah, so here there's another question. What is the importance of psychological support for an athlete to compete back at elite level? Okay. Psycho. Yes. Very simple answer. Yes, it's important, but also you have to check how strong, mental strong are your athletes. Some people don't need. And there is an old phrase they say it every time when I'm physical fit, I'm mental fit. I can do a lot of things. Yeah. So, but when you don't have this, you need someone to bring you back. And I guess a mental coach is quite good for you to help you to bring back your confidence. And you can start actually immediately after a surgery to work with these guys. They are good guys and you know what you're talking about. And when you have them, use them. Yeah, bring them inside the team. Yeah, and make your athletes strong. So someone has asked a question about uh, uh, aqua therapy. So like uh, aqua jog and all. Could you just highlight on that? Yes. Okay. What I said when uh, our athletes, the wound healing is completed. So there is no more. Yeah. It's totally, the scar is closed. Try to put him as soon as possible into water because it's very simple. The water have a lot of buoyancy. That means my body weight, I call it now is 80 kilos. In the water, it's maybe only 35 to 40 kilos. So half of the, my body weight yeah, doesn't exist in the water. That means there is no stress on your joints, on your muscles and on your bones. So important and you can train perfectly in the water. You can do aqua jogging, you can do endurance training, you can do speed training, you can do everything. So guys, you have a swimming pool and your athletes there. I hope he can swim and then put him in. Yeah. We had a lot of uh, guys with, uh, yeah, he couldn't swim. So we had a, a good uh, swimming bell and then you go ahead. Yeah. But you're totally right. And I'm very happy. Yes, use aqua therapy. It's very important. Okay, there's uh, one last question. This okay. is by Supradeep Mukherjee. Which type of training is more better for injury recovery? Eccentric or concentric? Make a good mix from both. Simple, good adaptation. You can't only uh, focus on one, do both. And you can do in blocks that you say, okay, this two weeks, I do the eccentrics, then I have a week rest and then do the, uh, the concentric. It's not a big deal. You can do it, but do adaptation, do a lot of variation in training. What is the very important stuff? Yeah. You can just mark in your question. Yeah. Okay. Is that all you? Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, York, uh, for the wonderful session. Uh, it was yes. very kind of you. That what you I can do now as well, uh, we give you one last slide when anyone need any help and I will send out my email okay. and um, sure. Kevin will do this. In the end, I said already, thank you very much. It was a pleasure and anything the next time, yeah? yeah. You can come back to me. Yeah, sure. and, Yes. And then we can do something again. Okay? All right. Thanks, York, once again. Okay, there's my email. More. Oh, yes. Thank you very much, and I say goodbye. All Thank right. you. Bye. Bye. Uh, so I think uh, we had uh, another. Uh,
uh, rehab session. Uh, I thought, okay, since uh, lots of injuries do take place in sport, and that is mostly mm -hmm. uh, knee injury. That's the reason that, okay, uh, I asked the uh, York Tech man to take a session on rehab of uh, knee, that's especially after ACL surgeries. And uh, we already had one on lower back earlier. So these two sessions, uh, I, I'm quite sure that uh, coaches uh, have got an idea, okay, basically what are the stages of uh, rehab and how it has to be done and how basically the conditioning program has to be con done during these stages so that the athletes are fully fit and would return back to sport at the earliest uh, after full uh, fitness. Uh, so now uh, I think uh, we have actually lots of athletes here who also have uh, turned out to be coaches. Probably they also must have experienced a lot of uh, low back injuries or ACL injuries. So it, I actually I just wanted uh, um, one of the athlete who was, I mean, coach or athlete who had got injured to speak on. But I find uh, is Bobby George there? Bobby George? Yes. yes. It was a long jumper, huh? Yeah, yeah, long jumper. Yeah. See, so, <laughs> ah, you remember? <laughs> <laughs> immediately, you know, because, yeah. He jumps in Bobby immediately. There? Uh, can you just unmute him? I would like to ask Bobby's experience uh, as an no, athlete. No, oh, then no, I can. All right. Uh, then in that case, okay, uh, I hand over to Dr. Abhimanyu Singh, who will uh, sum up both the sessions in Hindi. And uh, yeah, uh, those who wish to attend in the Hindi part, please stay back and rest of them can leave. Thank you very much. Yes. Dr. Abhimanyu Singh. Uh, you? Yeah, please. My email, I put it out here. Can you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see. Okay, good. Okay, any questions, you let me know. And when you do it the next time, yeah? Yes, Happy sure. to help you out. All okay. right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Or to Doctor. Any, any? No. Okay. Bye. I have a question. Thank you, sir. I'm audible. Yes, Doctor. Uh, सर थैंक यू आज आज के दो सेशन यहां पे कंप्लीट हुए हैं जिसमें पहला सेशन एक एक्सपेरिमेंटल स्टडी पे बेस्ड था जो एक इंटरनेशनल एथलीट इंडियन इंटरनेशनल एथलीट जो टॉप स्कीम ऑफ द कंट्री ही इज डूइंग ट्रेनिंग फॉर एंड प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द ओलंपिक्स Uh, उनके ऊपर मिस्टर uh, धीरज सिवरान का जो स्टडी uh, था उसको उन्होंने प्रेजेंट किया उनका ये कहना था कि ट्रिपल जंप एक ऐसा इवेंट है uh, जिसमें हॉरिजेंटल डिस्टेंस इम्पॉर्टेंट uh, है uh, जंप के बाद हम जितना कवर कर सकते हैं उस हम ट्रेनिंग जब भी करते हैं तो हॉरिजेंटल डिस्टेंस को टारगेट करते हैं ट्रिपल uh, जंप uh, के तीन फेज हैं अप्रोच टेक ऑफ फ्लाइट एंड लैंडिंग जब भी हम किसी एथलीट को ट्रेन करते हैं तो इन चार टोटल परफॉर्मेंस में इन चार के का जो भी रोल है उसको ध्यान में रख करके ही हम ट्रेनिंग करते हैं और जिसके अंदर के वर्टिकल इम्पैक्ट फोर्स हॉरिजेंटल वेलोसिटी वर्टिकल वेलोसिटी और कांटेक्ट टाइम पे काम करते हैं जब भी एथलीट के ऊपर हम काम करते हैं और नीड एनालिसिस के विषय में उन्होंने बात किया और ये बताया कि हम हम जब भी किसी एथलीट को जो जो ट्रिपल जम का एथलीट है उसको जब हम ट्रेन करते हैं तो अप्रोच स्पीड हमारा मेन गोल होता है उसी के ऊपर परफॉर्मेंस डिपेंड है आफ्टर दैट पीक फोर्स बॉडी वेट के प्रपोर्सन में क्या होगा और एफ डी क्या होगा कॉन्ट्रेक्शन हम कॉन्सेंट्रिक एक्सेंट्रिक बलेस्टिक 
स्ट्रेच शॉर्टनिंग साइकल्स वगैरह पे काम करते हैं फिर काउंटर मूवमेंट जंप हमारा टारगेट होता है ट्रेनिंग का टेस्टिंग के लिए चूंकि उन्होंने जो ये रिसर्च वर्क किया था उसमें प्री और पोस्ट टेस्ट किया था और बीच में सोलह सप्ताह का एक ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम ओलंपिक लिफ्ट बेस्ड ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम उन्होंने चलाया था जिसमें टेस्टिंग को देखें तो स्ट्रेंथ के लिए उन्होंने वन आर एम बेंच प्रेस और स्क्वाड को टेस्ट किया था और पावर के लिए काउंटर मूवमेंट्स जंप्स पावर वन आर एम पावर क्लीन स्पीड के लिए अप्रोच स्पीड टेक ऑफ और बॉडी फैट परसेंट को लेकर के किया था जो भी कंपोनेंट स्ट्रेंथ और कंडीशनिंग पर्पज उन्होंने लिया था उसका पर्पज था कि हम रिलेटिव स्ट्रेंथ को डेवलप करें ना कि अब्सोल्यूट स्ट्रेंथ को पावर को डेवलप करें और मसल मास को मेंटेन रखें ये उनका टारगेट था ट्रेनिंग का जो जो कंपोनेंट उन्होंने सेलेक्ट किया था इसी के बेसिस पे किया था और रिएक्टिव स्ट्रेंथ को फाइनली फाइनल पेज में इंक्लूड करने का के लिए एक्सरसाइजेस उन्होंने इंक्लूड किया था स्ट्रेंथ ट्रेनिंग कंडीशनिंग हॉल में ट्रेन किए गए और स्पीड ट्रेनिंग ट्रैक के अंदर ट्रेनिंग किए गए इस एक्सपेरिमेंटल स्टडी में जिसमें कि ट्रेनिंग के अंदर जो हॉल के अंदर ट्रेनिंग किए गए वो सारे स्ट्रेंथ एक्सरसाइजेस थे और स्पीड एक्सरसाइजेस ट्रैक के अंदर ट्रेन किए गए स्ट्रेंथ पहले ट्रेन किया गया और फॉलोड बाय पावर एंड द रिएक्टिव रिएक्टिव एक्सरसाइजेस दिए गए जब जो बाद के वीक्स थे बाद के सप्ताह थे उनके अंदर दिए गए फोर्स uh, प्लेटफॉर्म से जो डेटा प्राप्त हुआ उसमें जो उन्होंने कंक्लूड किया कि हाई जंप में 18 परसेंट का जो जंप के हाइट में 18 परसेंट का डेवलपमेंट हुआ काउंटर मूवमेंट भी बढ़ा काउंटर मूवमेंट जंप बढ़ा अप्रोच वेलोसिटी टेक ऑफ टेक ऑफ बोर्ड पे अप्रोच वेलोसिटी का बढ़ गया इस 16 सप्ताह के ट्रेनिंग के माध्यम से और स्ट्रेंथ जो वन आर एम बैक स्पॉट बैक स्पॉट स्ट्रेंथ का वो बढ़ गया बेंच प्रेस का वन आर एम बढ़ गया पावर बढ़ गया उसका कारण था कि रिलेटिव स्ट्रेंथ चूंकि बढ़ गया इसलिए पावर बढ़ गया और बॉडी फैट परसेंट था वो कंस्टेंट था जिसमें कोई बदलाव नहीं हुआ उनका कुछ सजेशंस था अपने प्रेजेंटेशन के अंदर और सजेशन ऐसे थे कि एक्सेंट्रिक पावर डेवलप किया जाए जब भी हम ट्रिपल जंपर्स के साथ डील कर रहे हैं और टाइम को जब भी हम एन टाइम हो और हम उसको प्लान करें इवेंट्स के पहले तो अगर टाइम सफिशिएंट है तो हम उसको प्रॉपर प्लान करें और तब उसका परफॉर्मेंस ज्यादा बेहतर होगा और एक्सेंट्रिक पावर पे काम करने के लिए उन्होंने सजेस्ट किया और रिलेटिव स्ट्रेंथ को डेवलप करने के लिए किया और जब भी हम काम कर रहे हैं तो जो जितने जंप्स हों वो 95 परसेंट के ऊपर ट्रेन किए जाएं ये उनका सजेशन था ये पहला प्रेजेंटेशन था और आज का दूसरा प्रेजेंटेशन जॉर्ज चाइकमैन का था जिन्होंने रिहेबिलिटेशन ट्रेनिंग आफ्टर नी इंजरीज के ऊपर बात किया और बेसिकली इंटीरियर क्रोशिएट लिगामेंट के जो इंजरीज हैं उनको लेकर उन्होंने अपना प्रेजेंटेशन दिया जो पोस्ट सर्जिकल रिहेबिलिटेशन थे उसके ऊपर मलेशियन स्पोर्ट्स में जो भी लोग टॉप लेवल के एथलीट्स हैं ओलंपिक या एशियन गेम्स लेवल के उनके कुल वन वन थर्टी नाइन एथलीट्स का एक डेटा है जिसमें कि उनका ये कहना था कि एक सौ पच्चीस कम्प्लीटली रक्षर्ड एथलीट का सिचुएशन था और चौदह एथलीट थे जिसमें कि जिनका पार्शियल रक्षर था और उनके एक डेटा उन्होंने बताया कि मलेशियन स्पोर्ट्स के अंदर कितना एथलीट इंजर्ड होते हैं और कैसे उनको क्योर करके हम पुनः एथलेटिक्स के लिए तैयार करते हैं 
उनका उनके प्रेजेंटेशन में उन्होंने बताया कि बासठ परसेंट एथलीट हैं जो कि इंजरी के बाद पहले जब जब हम क्योर नहीं था तो बासठ परसेंट एथलीट थे जो कंटिन्यू कर रहे थे और 38 परसेंट एथलीट एथलेटिक्स छोड़ देते थे और 65 परसेंट री इंजर्ड होते थे बाद में जब उन्होंने जब उनके माध्यम से एक रिहेबिलिटेशन सिस्टम को डेवलप किया इन इंजरीज पे वो उस घटे उस, उसके बाद वो घटते चले गए रिहेबिलिटेशन किन किन माध्यम से करते हैं जिसके अंदर उनका प्र, अपने प्रेजेंटेशन में हाईलाइट किया कि फिजियोथेरेपी के माध्यम से हो सकता है साइकोलॉजिकल थेरेपी है स्पोर्ट्स थेरेपी है जिसमें स्पोर्ट्स मूवमेंट्स को हम बायोमेकेनिकल एनालिसिस के माध्यम से करते हैं हाइड्रोथेरेपी है और न्यूट्रिशन थेरेपी है इन इनके माध्यम से हम करते हैं एथलीट को रिहेबिलिटेट करते हैं रिहेबिलिटेशन क्यों जरूरी है इसलिए कि हम रिकवर करते हैं एथलीट को छोटों से उसको स्ट्रेंदन करते हैं रिब्यूल्ड करते हैं और प्रिवेंट करते हैं जब भी रिहेबिलिटेशन एक प्रोसेस है जो उनका ये कहना था कि रिहेबिलिटेशन एक प्रोसेस है जो रिकवरी के प्रोसेस को बढ़ाता है और बॉडी स्ट्रेंथन होकर पुनः है काम करने के लिए रेडी होती है उन्होंने जो मॉडल प्रोड्यूस किया उसके अंदर हम सबसे पहले एथलीट को का असेसमेंट करेंगे फिर थेरेपी करेंगे थेरेपी और जो भी ट्रेनिंग रिक्वायर है वो करेंगे फिर उसका मॉनिटरिंग करते रहेंगे और पुनः री इवेलुएशन करेंगे तो इवेलुएशन प्लानिंग ट्रीटमेंट और री के माध्यम से हम चलाएंगे डायग्नोसिस uh, जब भी हम डायग्नोसिस करते हैं किसी एथलीट का uh, तो uh, क्या uh, uh, क्या हुआ है फिर uh, कैसे उसको चोट लगा है और कब लगा है इनकी ये, इन बातों का हम टेस्ट करते हैं और uh, हम क्यों टेस्ट करेंगे और uh, कहाँ टेस्ट करेंगे इन, ये हमारे मेन uh, एस्पेक्ट्स uh, हैं ट्रेनिंग के जब भी हम रिहेबिलिटेशन के लिए रेडी करते हैं और कौन कौन से वेरिएबल्स हैं जिनको टेस्ट किया जाए और हम एक रेगुलर इंटरवल पे टेस्ट करते रहें कि उसके ऊपर क्या प्रभाव पड़ रहा है और जो भी रिजल्ट है उनको हम डॉक्टर या पेशेंट जो भी लीड है उसको शेयर करें और एक अच्छे माहौल में हम ट्रीटमेंट करें तो उसका प्रभाव ज्यादा होगा फिर टेक्निक कॉम्पिटेंसी को हम टेस्ट ना करें जब भी एथलीट अगर इंजर्ड है तो उसके टेक्निक कॉम्पिटेंसी को टेस्ट ना करें और हमारा जो एथलीट है वो समझ सके कि क्या हमने टेस्ट किया है और पर्पज हमारा क्या है उन्होंने चार फेज में इसको क्योर करने के लिए सजेस्ट किया फेज वन में मोबलाइजेशन जिसके अंदर कि हम मसल को मोबिलिटी डेवलप करना करना शुरू करते हैं जिसमें कि कोऑर्डिनेशन का डेवलपमेंट फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी का डेवलपमेंट सर्किट ट्रेनिंग वगैरह ट्रेनिंग हम रखते हैं अगर हम सेकेंड फेज को देखें तो एंडोरेंस डेवलपमेंट का ट्रेनिंग हम देंगे और स्ट्रेंथ एंडोरेंस इंक्लूड करेंगे अपने ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम में कोऑर्डिनेशन होगा मोबिलिटीज होंगे आइसोमेट्रिक ट्रेनिंग को ज्यादा हम प्रिफर करेंगे और आइसोकानेटिक एक्सरसाइजेस भी देंगे और एक्सरसाइजेस 120 से 180 मिनट पर डे हम दे सकते हैं फेज थर्ड को देखें तो स्पीड और मोबिलिटी हमारा मेन फोकस होगा रनिंग इंक्लूड होगा और ट्रेनिंग को Uh, हम मसल्स को हायर ट्रेनिंग लेवल पे ट्रेन करेंगे uh, जो फोर्थ uh, फेज है जो हम जब हम रेडी करते हैं एथलीट को uh, किसी इवेंट्स में पार्ट करने के लिए उसके पहले हम स्पीड एंडोरेंस स्ट्रेंथ और प्ले uh, 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 के अंदर री इंटीग्रेशन के लिए हम उसको रेडी uh, करेंगे एथलीट uh, को मोटिवेट करेंगे और सेल्फ मोटिवेटेड हो और टीम ट्रेनिंग के लिए रेडी हो ये हमारा फोकस होगा रिहेबिलिटेशन ट्रेनिंग का उसके बाद हम उसको फ्री करेंगे कि दे कैन हम जब छोड़ेंगे तो उस लेवल पे प्रिपेयर्ड होना चाहिए कि जिस भी इवेंट में पार्टिसिपेट कर रहा है बिना किसी डिफिकल्टी के पार्टिसिपेट कर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच
thank you dr abhimanyu singh uh, it was wonderful uh, so tomorrow we have our last two sessions uh, of theoretical aspects uh, so one will be taken by dr manilal and another by one of the conditioning specialists uh, g devaya um, so with that uh, we'll be having um, and after that uh, we'll be having a closing ceremony where we have our uh, secretary of ministry of that's a mys will be attending so i request you all to stay back for uh, the second i mean as uh, for the closing ceremony tomorrow um, just don't leave leo and go before everything is concluded uh, so please be there and uh, yeah thank you very much for attending today's session and uh, yeah I'll see you tomorrow good evening and good day balance good day to you all thank you very much all right bye